Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Today, let us understand the digestion and absorption process of lipids. So, before going so, we have to understand what kind of lipids or the fats we consume in our diet. They predominantly either we call them literally oils, but oil is not as simple. They may contain simple fatty acids, the triacylglycerols, especially those who are taking a non vegetarian food. They also have something called as cholesterol because cholesterol is uh, one of the molecules which is present uh, only in animal kingdom. They are not coming from the uh, plant source. And of course, there is uh, one more important uh, kind of lipid called as phospholipids, which are predominantly a component of cell membrane in all living organisms. So, in a vegetarian food, you may have fatty acids depending on the long chain, short chain, medium chain, saturated, unsaturated etc. Whereas, if you take a non-vegetarian food including that of milk or butter whatever, they may have triacylglycerols depending on the type of food, of course, phospholipids and cholesterol. So, there should be a mechanism to digest and absorb all these molecules. There is one more important aspect in this digestion process unlike that of protein and uh, uh, carbohydrate is that very nature of this fat. The fat unlike protein and carbohydrate is non-polar in nature and any non-polar compound if it is released into the blood directly like that it can cause embolism and can cause sudden death of that individual because it will not mix with the blood. So, we will try to understand how nature has planned meticulously each one of it. So, the learning objectives for the class is digestion, absorption, the action of lipases, the, the what are the inhibitors of this absorption and the importance of bile acid in the process and the need for re-esterification of digested lipids in our diet. So, let us now start with the whatever that I already mentioned the different type of lipids we consume in our diet namely simple fats, triacylglycerols, phospholipids and cholesterol. So, in the mouth in the first phase when you take after during your the food is in the mouth, there is only one enzyme called as lingual lipase, but because of the availability of the time for this enzyme is very minimal because most of us will have a tendency to gulp the food without proper biting, there is a very minimal digestion that uh, occurs. That also occurs only in a small fatty acids or small triglycerides, not long fatty acids because it is a very limited time. And uh, whatever the partial digested food uh, will enter the uh, stomach. In the stomach, uh, in the adults, there is no significant digestion because something called gastric lipase is available, but it is predominantly active in milk fat, that is, the uh, short and medium chain fats present in the milk, and especially in the uh, infants where the pH is not uh, very low, that means acid is very less as compared to an adult and uh, there it is active. In adults, this uh, enzyme called a gastric lipase is not very much predominantly active and does not have a significant uh, role in digestive process of lipids. Whereas, in infants, there may be a role for gastric lipase in digestion of short and medium chain fats present in the milk because milk being the predominant diet for the babies. That is why I have not shown this in this diagram. So, next we will directly come to small intestine, which is the major place 
for digestion of the lipids. So, what happens is the there are important enzymes which are present in the small intestine or the we call as pancreatic phase of the in, uh, digestion uh, is which have pan, uh, enzymes coming from the pancreas. What are they? The uh, uh, pancreatic amylase, phospholipase A2 and cholesterol esterase. So, there can be uh, two mechanisms based on the nature of the fat which we consume after the digestion process through this various enzymes I just I mentioned the fats can be uh, the triacylglycerol the predominant component of our diet predominant component of lipid is a triacylglycerol which is broken down to glycerol and fatty acids and if it happens to be glycerol being a polar like glucose it will be directly absorbed into the blood stream to portal circulation and uh, fatty acids if it is happens to be a short and medium chain fatty acids something like that in the milk does not require the mediation of bile acids it is directly absorbed into the blood stream whereas the long chain fatty acids the typical adult diet they require a mediation of bile acids. So, what they do? They will uh, because of non polar in nature in the stomach lumen or in the intestinal lumen they will try to form a uh, uh, ball like structure and uh, enzymes pancreatic enzymes because they will not mix with the water like substance present in the intestinal juice. So, there should be a mechanism to break this uh, ball into small multiple globules that can be possible only by the action of bile acids. How this bile acid will work? This bile acid will reduce the surface tension and break down the big globule into smaller particles so that more and more enzymes, pancreatic enzymes can act and effectively digest this non-polar compounds better. Once this digestion process is over, it is not complete that means even for absorption into the intestinal cell unlike that of a protein or a carbohydrate there is a uh, there is no need for a special transport system because it is a polar uh, non-polar molecule and a membrane is also non-polar but it has one more problem because it is the fatty acids which are relatively large in size they require some mediation even though they are non-polar to be effectively pushed into the intestinal cell. There comes the help of something called as micelle formation. Micelle formation is one of the important uh, mechanism wherein the bile acid which are there which not only helps in emulsification in the process it also forms something called micelle. Micelle is a ball like structure the core of this uh, ball will have the neutral fat and the periphery of which will have a amphipathic uh, lipid along with the bile acid. Amphipathic lipid means a lipid has both polar as well as non-polar part in it. We will try to understand this one by one. And finally, once uh, this is absorbed through my cell into the intestinal cell. In the intestinal cell, they are re-esterified into triacylglycerol again. They are packaged into after re-synthesis into triacylglycerol. They are packaged into a molecule called as chylomicrons because I was mentioning that these fats are non-polar. They cannot transport themselves into the blood because they can cause problem. So, they require a special transport system called a chylomicron which effectively transports this uh, whatever kind of lipid or fat into the blood stream. The summary of what happens is we have predominantly triacylglycerol in our diet, we have action of lipase and finally at the end of which you can see here the fatty acids present in uh, carbon 1 and carbon 3 is removed 
and uh, we will come with the 2 monoacyl glycerol, but series of action of same pancreatic lipase. That means, nearly 75 to 80 percent of our triacyl glycerol are predominantly broken down into 2 monoacyl glycerol and 2 fatty acids. So, this is again depicted here, this is a typical triacyl glycerol has a, this is a 3 fatty acids R1, R2 and R3. The pancreatic lipase will act first on the position number 3 fatty acid, it forms 1, 2 diacyl glycerol and 1 fatty acids. Further one more action of the same enzyme will remove the R1 fatty acid and finally it forms 2 monoacyl glycerol. That means the fatty acid present in R2 position is not touched. So, in addition to the lipase action, we have one more protein called as colipase which further facilitates this process and one more important uh, factor is the availability of the calcium. So, I was uh, any enzyme system in our body, once the product is formed, it can have a ability to inhibit the action of enzymes like we saw in case of enzyme chapter. So, here what happens is imagine that lipase is acting in thousands of these triacyl glycerol molecules and uh, by end of this uh, two reactions, there may be too many fatty acids which are floating in the intestinal uh, uh, lumen which can feed back inhibit the further digestion of triacyl This is called product inhibition, product inhibition of an enzyme. So, the end product of this uh, lipase digestion is fatty acids, free fatty acids. This can uh, feed back inhibit this entire process and can significantly retard this process. So, to facilitate this, there should be a need for calcium which is a part of our bile juice. This calcium, how it facilitates? It will form calcium soaps of the released free fatty acids and prevent the possible inhibition of the action of lipase. So, availability of the calcium is very important in the process of digestion of triacyl glycerol by lipase. So, next important uh, uh, lipid which is present other than uh, your triacyl glycerol is a phospholipid. I was mentioning that this is a component of a lipid membrane of all the living organisms. So, whenever we consume lot of this non-vegetarian food, there may be this phospholipid as a predominant component of our diet. So, unlike a triacyl glycerol, what the difference here is? It has R1 and R2 fatty acid, but the third position, there is no fatty acid here it has one phosphate and one other group that is why it is called phospholipid and this is a typical amphipathic lipid or that means it has a polar component, this is a polar component and this R1 and R2 has fats which are non-polar that is both polar and non-polar in a single molecule is called as amphipathic lipid. So, here also there is separate enzyme because it is a big molecule, the two fatty acids attached here. So, phospholipase A2, which is selectively as the name say A2, it just cleaves the R2, that was the fatty acid position at C carbon 2 and cleaves. So, that leads to a product. You can see here, this is a phospholipid, typical phospholipid. The, the fatty acid is positioned to a circle here, fatty acid is positioned to only is removed by the action of phospholipase A2 and that is released as free fatty acid and whatever is the product remain now has only one fatty acid R1 is called as lysophospholipid. So, the end product of phospholipid digestion is fatty acid plus lysophospholipid, only one step. Now comes the important signature molecule of animal kingdom called as cholesterol. The cholesterol predominantly present in non-vegetarian food and uh, it is usually found as esterified to a fatty acid. Cholesterol has a hydroxyl group at 3 carbon, is a signature hydroxyl group, it is esterified to a fatty acid. So, cholesterol in our diet predominantly present as cholesterol 
ester. So this is broken down, you can see here as marked by the blue cross. It is uh, removed by a specific enzyme called as cholesterol esterase into cholesterol and free fatty acid. So only then it can be absorbed. So now comes the role of bile acid. So as so far I was telling that uh, lipids, whatever is their form, they are non-polar. Typical, this is a, imagine that this is a glass bowl and you put some coconut oil or any oil in it, it does not mix with water. It will, it is a relatively dense, uh, less dense than the water, so that it is a, uh, it will try to float and forms a separate layer on the surface of water. So it will not let the water molecule enter in its area. That means it tries to repel the water, it is non-polar and try to form a single layer. Similarly, whenever we take a fat in our diet, it forms a single large layer or molecule wherein enzyme cannot enter the, uh, this entire layer or the, uh, the ball of this lipid so that the digestion process is significantly retarded. This is because of the surface tension phenomenon. So how this can be minimized? Like a typical detergent, whatever, whenever we have uh, our, when we take bath or when you wash your cloth, any food material or any oily material we have to remove, we have to add soap to that. Whenever soap is added, whatever the material is immediately removed from the uh, cloth or it can be washed away whenever taking bath, whatever the uh, uh, oil like substance on our skin. This is made possible by the action detergent, we call it detergent action or sometimes, sometimes in our biological system, this is called as emulsification. What exactly happens here is, this is a typical example of the soap water. So if you add the soap to this uh, beaker, entire fat layer is broken and uh, all the fat, uh, the oil becomes a small uh, globules. This you can do at your home. You take a beaker of water, add oil on the top, uh, add some water and pour some oil. Oil will float on the top. Then you add one drop of your any soap which you use and wait for some time. You can see entire fat layer is disintegrated into small, small particles similar action occurs in our system wherein the bile acid acts like a detergent and it uh, breaks the bigger layer into small multiple particles wherein for on each particle this pancreatic lipase will can act effectively and there will be effective digestion process. This entire action is called as emulsification. This is only one aspect of this bile acid. So at the end of this uh, uh, digestion process, still it is a larger molecule unlike a typical uh, protein or carbohydrate. So it requires some more mediation of the bile acid. So you can see here, whatever you can see is green is nothing but bile acid. They form the outer layer and the inner layer has a neutral lipid, the triacylglycerol, cholesterol ester or cholesterol. The cholesterol, so cholesterol ester and cholesterol and uh, two monocell glycerol, which are digested products, uh, will uh, and uh, free cholesterol, which is broken down after digestion, free cholesterol after cholesterol esterase action, and uh, two monocell glycerol at the end of lipase the digestion becomes uh, amphipathic and they form the periphery, and the undigested cholesterol ester, triacyl glycerol, they form the core. This entire structure is called as micelle. Okay. This will facilitate the entry of this digested products into the intestinal cell from the intestinal lumen. As you can see, this is a typical micelle which has the amphipathic outer layer and neutral core which will come to the luminal side. When it comes close to the luminal side of the intestinal cell, it will be rapidly, uh, it will help to rapidly enter this molecule into the intestinal cell. Once the in the intestinal cell, as I was mentioning that two monocell glycerol is the predominant component, will be further re-esterified into triacyl glycerol before it can be packaged into chylomicron, is a transport vehicle of this digested lipid into the blood. 
it is not again directly into the blood as you can see here it is actually going to a separate vessel called as lymphatics from there drop by drop it is entering the blood meticulously making sure that this large molecules will not clog the arteries and cause embolism. Now comes the other areas which can facilitate the absorption process. As I mentioned previously the very nature of our intestinal lumen which has multiple folds they are called as plicae circularis which will significantly increase as the rate or the uh, surface area available for the absorption process. This is very important for humans because humans stand straight and the food flows along the gravity and there is limited time available for the absorption. If you take a, if you can see a small square here, if I take a magnification of this, what we see here is further such folds, they are called as villi. And if you take a magnification of this square and take a zoom it and you can see further small folds, they are called as microvilli. By virtue of this multiple folds, what we understand is there is a surface area is increased nearly 1000 times which is available for absorption of any nutrient in our diet. So, this all further facilitates effective absorption of any food which we consume in our diet. So, in the uh, unlike the carbohydrate or uh, the protein absorption, there is a separate channel called as lacteal which is present in the core of this villi which makes sure that the uh, absorbed lipid if it is a long chain fatty acids or cholesterol esters or phospholipids are shunted to this lacteals which will further transport it through chylomicrons. Whereas, if it is a short chain fatty acids like milk fat need not require the chylomicron mediation does not require a mediation of bile acid can be di directly absorbed into the portal blood uh, and will be transported bound to albumin that free fatty acid albumin complex and effectively transported into the blood because they are smaller molecules they can be used as ready source of energy. So, here is the summary, summary of what I told now uh, the digestion will have predominantly triacylglycerol in our diet which is broken down to two monoacylglycerol and free fatty acids. This requires mediation of bile salts which uh, breaks the lipid uh, into smaller particles so that uh, increase uh, uh, it facilitates rapid digestion and it also makes the possible by formation of micelles a, a ball like structure which uh, helps to release the digested lipid into the intestinal cell. Once it is in the intestinal cell based on the type of fatty acid if it is a short chain fatty acid does not require the chylomicron it is directly absorbed into the capillary to proto circulation whereas if it is a long chain fatty acid cholesterol esters or phospholipids they require mediation of chylomicrons before doing so they have to be reesterified back into triacylglycerol or cholesterol esters so that they can be packaged into chylomicron and they not only that they will go in through the lacteals not directly into the blood lacteals from there they are released into the blood slowly by drop by drop. So, the end result of this entire process is either they are used for any uh, source of energy for like glucose fatty acids can be used as a source of energy by any organ which has a mitochondria only place which cannot be used is uh, the RBC because does not have mitochondria and the brain which does, does not let the fatty acid pass through the blood brain barrier. So, glucose is an inevitable source for energy for the brain and RBC. So, what happens is uh, whatever the extra amount of fat is floating in the blood that is not good for health. 
we have a very good repository called as adipose tissue as you can see here adipose sites which can store up to 80 percent of their volume whatever fat we take in so much so the nucleus is pushed to the periphery and cytoplasm is very small here as you can see here so that more and more fats can be stored effectively which can be used as a reserve source whenever there is a need. So now uh, let us uh, try to understand some applied aspect of this entire uh, knowledge. So when we know that uh, there are a lot of enzyme systems, uh, bile salts are required, transport mechanisms are required, lipoproteins are required for absorption and digestion of these lipids. Uh, scientifically, this knowledge can be used to uh, help in curing some disorders. So let us see some examples. See uh, anionic exchange resins. So these are nothing but you can see bile acid is here, is released from the uh, bile juice. What happens is they, uh, these are anion. That anion, as I say that it is positive, uh, it is uh, positively charged. So now it is positively charged anionic binding resins that means it can bind to negatively charged bile acid and forms a adduct formation and this will further retard the action of bile acid on the intestine so that digestion process is not good it, uh, it uh, prevents the effective digestion of lipids so that no more lipids are absorbed into the blood so that it will help the person who is suffering from hyperlipidemia. One more uh, meta medicine called as azetamide, you can see here, it can a uh, inhibitor of cholesterol absorption directly. You can, this is very well known, HMG-CoA inhibitor, which is a very, such many uh, drugs are here mentioned, which will inhibit the de novo synthesis of cholesterol in our system. One more mechanism is fibrates is one of the drugs given for hyperlipidemia. It will facilitate or activate the lipoprotein lipase action and along with nicotinic acid, long acting nicotinic acid, both will acti activate the action of lipoprotein lipase wherein that will be facilitates the uh, metabolism of this various lipoproteins in the system so that it will benefit the patient. So some more applications, Ma pancreatic lipase can be inhibited by a drug called as Orlistat so that uh, enzyme itself is not able to act on these lipids so the digestion will not occur properly. In case of obstructive jaundice, that means bile acid is no more coming into the intestine that may cause significant decrease in absorption of various lipids along with the fat soluble vitamins like A, D, E and K and also cause loose stools, loose fatty stools called steatorrhea. So, in such cases like obstructive jaundice when you know that bile acids are not available, you can treat that patient by giving short chain fatty acid like milk fat which we know that does not require mediation of bile salt, does not require mediation of chylomicrons. So that is the reason vitamin K injections are given especially in premature babies. The very reason is being the intestine does not have the uh, mechanism to absorb fat very young infant and only milk uh, is the, the infant is taking only milk and the milk is very poor, so poor source of vitamin K. If it is not given, it can cause intracranial hemorrhages. And this is a actually important uh, concept used in bariatric surgery in people with obese or PCOD and infertile patient because of the overweight they fail to conceive and uh, obesity is a very serious problem called health effects. So bariatric surgery means they remove the significant chunk 
of this intestine so that area available for absorption is minimized so that it will benefit the fish i hope by now you have understood the various uh, enzyme systems the action of bile salts the uh, the role of uh, lipoproteins and action and applied part using this inhibitors at various levels in the process of lip digestion of lipids thank you